how to sharpen your clipper blades. It is cheap, efficient, and easy to do. And it will save you a lot of money in the long run. And also, you don't end up having so many blades. And they are now getting more expensive. So I'm going to teach you how to sharpen them. And I'm going to go through step by step. Step one is you can either use a mirror or a piece of glass. I'm using a mirror here. And then sellotape. And then basically cut the sandpaper in half if they're, you know, like these ones. That I cut them in half. If not, if they come like these strips. Um, basically sellotape them. Uh, put 150 on one side and 220 on the other side and make sure they're secure onto the board and that they're very much flat on the board. Step two, check the blades. As you can see here, this blade has unevenness. Um, it's just really dirty. And then this one as well, it's very dirty. So what I need you to do step for step two is basically clean them. and. Ideally, you can use something like this, like hand sanitizer, which has alcohol in it, or something like that. So anything that can clean it. And I recommend you use a toothbrush as well to take out all the hairs and use a kitchen cloth or something like this to clean the blades. Get rid of the oil, get rid of um, basically any grease and dirt. Once you cleaned it, they should have a nice shine finish. Um, all the grease should have come out and stain. That's why I use this. As you can see, remove stains. Um, it has white vinegar in it. So you can use white vinegar if you want. If you still struggle to um, get the stains out or the grease out, you can use for this. Let's see, it says excellent for cleaning uh, fluid clipper. So uh, it's up to you. Right now, for me, this is reasonable. They're all right. Just do one last check. Give it a nice. And you can see. The scratches you can see the metal where it's being used and what we're going to do is we're going to, leave it, we're going to give it a nice uh, polished finish as you can see here and the same on this one you can see like on the corners bottom corners okay so now I'm going to go to the next step which is step four step four with well, step four is make sure you check the metal and and make sure there is no chip there is no um, anything that's out of place. And the reason for that is because there's no way of fixing it. So make sure everything is perfect. You know, if it's a chip, throw it away. There's no point of sharpening, just get a new plate. The next step now is, let me get it back to focus, is you get, you put the metal like this. Now I using a uh, magnet that I got from the, um, uh, one of those kitchen cabins into to seal shut the door uh, and I took the metal magnet out of it and put it on a, on one on its basically a metal thing and I put a little bit of blue tack but this is white tack uh, you can use anything sticky and then all I do as you can see immediately is press it down make sure I got a good hold and which I do now as you can see here and then on the 150 grit now this is very important the pressure you put on it it's kind of like a light push, not heavy, very light. And now we're going to start with the first stroke. That's one, two, three, four, five. And when you do five, you should get a really good result. As you can see here. Now, I highly recommend you just keep doing it until you get a nice, um, basically even finish. Now, this is how it looks. I've done 30 times uh, on the 150 grit back and forward. The next step is clean off this residue that's left behind as you can see here. And you just need to clean that off. And then I use a neck duster, a spare one I've got, to wipe off any of that, that leftover dust. And then get yourself a black marker pen and then paint this whole bit here with the black marker pen. Okay, step five is wait for the uh, marker pen to dry. Uh, once that's done, have a look at it. Make sure it's done everywhere perfectly. Maybe I left this bit of the corner, but that's not gonna be important. Now, you do the same thing you did again. And the reason we're using a marker pen As you can see the center bit. So it tells you where it still needs more work. 
You see? And then just keep on going. Yep, still the center bit. So you can go like this way now. Still the center. this bit. Let me have a quick look. Yeah, still that bit. And this will tell you exactly how many times you need to stroke it until you get it perfect. Ooh, let's see with the light. Yeah, almost, almost. As you can see, it's getting lighter and lighter every time I go over it. Maybe if I do it this way. Ah, there we are. See? A lot better. Still a little bit, but a lot better. Sorry. Still a little bit left, but a lot better than before. And that's how you know how many strokes you do. But it always got to be straight and away from the teeth. Going backwards like this. Always. Okay, now that there is better. Let me just wipe off the residue from my hand. Ah, just a little bit more. You can see it on these teeth. And then once you keep going, then you know you're ready to, ready to go to the next step. As you can see now, it is perfect. There's going to be light scratches, but that bit, we're going to do the next bit to get rid of. And that's on the 220 grit. And as you can see here, it's perfect. It's a lot better than before. All right. So now I'm going to go on the 220 side. I'm going to move this out the way and get my magnet again. And then same method. Make sure you got it clean service same method down across now this side the 220 it's very smooth right and then this side you can feel it. it's a bit on the rough end um if you're wondering if you go online you can use 150 100 to 150 this side and then i believe it's 180 to to whatever on this side uh, I think it's about 300 max, as I, I highly recommend. Don't don't go too far out. But really, ideally, always use a 150 and a 220. Um, if you if you go online, I'm gonna leave a a text bit to show you what I mean on the different um, recommended sandpapers, which is okay to use. Now going back to this, that's all you gotta do. And you see, it's a lot smoother here. And what you're doing here is you're just polishing, and I need to mention one thing, very important. Count how many strokes you do here. So I did I did a lot, right? And I know I did a lot, but um, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna try and do the same amount. So I did 30 plus another 30, and I'm gonna add 10 more for just to be on the safe side. So let's say 50 here. Here, I'm gonna do 100 to be safe, and then I might add another 20. It's not, it's not gonna affect me because you can do, um about 10 in a matter of three seconds and you just keep doing this and it should leave this like beautiful polished finish that you can see here and again do as many as you can on this side and it, and also keep doing do my method where you go like this as well turn it the other way so what I like to do is I'll do 20 like this. 
and then I'll go and do 10. Next bit, 10, 10, 10. And then, sorry, and then back again with twins. And as you can see, I'm just keep on going. Okay, step six is you basically, you've got the blade. It's now beautiful. Look at that. Nice finish. A lot better than before. Now, I, I've i inspected it a little bit more. And you can see, I don't know if you can see it, but the chips on the blade. So unfortunately, this one, uh, I would not recommend you use. Um, can you see, guys? Can you see that chip? It exposed the chips. It's like... Yeah, and because of that, I won't be using this ever again. It's going to, unfortunately, be going to a recycling center. You can see it. You see the, my camera doesn't have good zoom. This is an iPhone XR. Can you guys see it? Those, yeah. So this one, I would highly not recommend you use. But I'm going to go to the next step anyways to show you what you need to do. The next step is very straightforward, it's simple. Spray it, both sides. As I say, this has like a white uh, white vinegar and just basically leave it for a bit. And use the toothbrush. Now I can't do it with two, I normally should do it with two hands, but I'm only using one hand. And then at the same time, while you're brushing it under the sink, Oh, it's hot. Let's go back up one. There we go. And make sure it's super clean. Um, I highly recommend you do it twice with the spray. Okay, so what you do then is you put it here, spray, which I've done already. Turn it, just turn it around. It's very difficult to do filming and there we go. Second spray. And then get the water running lightly and then with the toothbrush i would hold it like this with the other hand remove any uh, residue or grit or whatever dirt it was from the sandpaper that that black substance out, out of it okay and then when you're done make sure you dry it very very important you dry dry the hell out of it so I'm using this, but I can, you know, kitchen roll will do the job. Um, and then what I like to do as well is to get an earbud to do the whole bit here. And it, sometimes you'll get a black residue. And then just make sure you dry as much as you can. All right. Okay, it's now fully dry. And as I said earlier, this particular blade has some defects that I don't recommend we use. You can see them on the teeth. Um, to it's when I put my nails over it, I can feel it slightly. So I don't recommend um, to actually use this. Just go buy another one, unfortunately. But at least you now know how to do the sharpening, and you do the same thing with this one. Sometimes. You can see it sometimes you can't but again it's best to inspect it twice i highly recommend you get a juror's loop and uh, that will give you a, a better uh, close-up to what you're looking at and it saves you time from all this process that i've done but this is for educational reasons i've done it and um, i hope this helps and uh, you can see the before and after of course it's just a matter of just going back to the step one and you can see now it's a, such a nice uh, polished finish it's good as new basically and ready to use uh, unfortunately this one recycling center thank you for watching my videos and i hope this helps